Welcome to the NTN Nightly. I'm Misha Charles. This edition's top stories. The countdown is on for the island's 40th independence anniversary. The government of St. Lucia is moving aggressively to enhance agro-processing. The Holy See to St. Lucia presented letters of credentials to the Governor-General of St. Lucia. All that was the latest in youth development, sports and the NTN Wapon en Quayon. The Independence 40 Committee is moving into high gear as St. Lucia inches closer to its 40th Independence anniversary. Although the celebrations will span one year, the events leading up to Independence Day are sure to please. One of the most anticipated events is the Best of St. Lucia concert. On the eve of Independence, the 21st of February, Castries will be abuzz with major cultural displays and exhibitions. Two event sites within the city are being prepared to host these showcases, one being Constitution Park and the other being Jeremy Street between Block DS and the Castries Market. So in essence, the format for the event is one stage um, within the William Peter Boulevard and another along Jeremy Street right between the Castries Market and what we know as the CDC buildings. The production will capture what is truly St. Lucian in terms of culture which, have been ha which has been handed down through the generations. Um, we will see a cultural heritage and history portrayed, something that we really, really um, cherish. And a number of art forms will be on display, including dance, music, and of course, theatrical performances. Another anticipated event is a feature stage presentation marking the 40th anniversary of St. Lucia's independence. The presentation is dubbed the St. Lucia Story and takes place on Thursday, February 21st at the South Plain Field. It is the story of a young man called Lucien, for obvious reasons, who takes a journey through his past, through his imagination. It's a mystical journey going back through history of St. Lucia, his people, himself, his life. Um, and he visits all the major highlights that have made us who we are today, including the birth of the island, our Amerindian history, our African ancestry, and as well as major milestones in St. Lucia's recent past and present. So it is a, it's a fictitious journey which allows us to explore all of the facets of our national identity. The annual Independence Walk on February 21st spans 88 miles across the country. The event is being hosted by the Northern Long Distance Walking Group and is being dubbed the Round the Island Challenge 2019. You don't have to do the complete walk. It's not a race, it's a challenge. So um, we're excited that this is the 40th year of independence. We are introducing a relay option. So if you don't want to walk by yourself, you could walk as a team. So there are four legs to this relay option. You could walk from cul-de-sac, it starts at the Massey Car Park from 5 p.m. So you could walk from cul-de-sac to Soufre, then another member of your team will walk from Soufre to Viewfort, then another member of your team walks from Viewfort to Denry, and then we, the last leg is from Denry to the William Peter Boulevard. So it, it's, it's something that you could do on your own or as a team. It's a great way to see our beautiful island. It's a great way to, to challenge yourself. The flag raising ceremony will take place at midnight, ushering in Independence Day, Friday, 22nd February. The military parade will be held later that morning. There will also be, for the first time, an Independence Day parade. St. Lucia's 40th Independence Anniversary Celebrations is being observed under the theme, All In, Our Journey, Our Future. There continues to be significant strides in the export of agricultural products from St. Lucia. Recently, Mangal Trading, spearheaded by young entrepreneur Neela Mangal, successfully shipped a consignment of bananas, plantains and cucumbers to a buyer in the United Kingdom. The buyer has expressed interest in another shipment from Mangal Trading, requesting a wider variety of produce from the young exporter. According to Export St. Lucia CEO Sunita Daniel, this initial export speaks volumes in terms of diversifying agricultural exports from St. Lucia. The CEO says Export St. Lucia remains committed to the introduction of St. Lucian products and services to existing and new markets. Meantime, the government of St. Lucia is moving aggressively to get more people involved in adding value to their products through agro-processing. With the help of the Ministry of Agriculture, individuals as well as groups can take advantage of the opportunity to develop their products. One of the areas of interest is the production of coffee. 
This was an opportunity where an investor is looking at developing the coffee and cocoa industry, but focusing primarily on coffee, where they uh, have invested lots of money in developing the flavor that is St. Lucian, single source. So all the coffee that they want to produce and sell and put on the market has to come from St. Lucia. Yes, they presently have a cafe at Point Seraphine, and I invite everybody to go down there and taste that coffee. Because the, the visitors come off the cruise ship and head straight to that cafe. Because some of them say what they get on the boat is crap. Mm. That's not my words, that's their words. Noble Tree Coffee and Cocoa Inc. has been working with extension officers at the Ministry of Agriculture to help revitalize the coffee industry. Like I told you, our focus has been in Region 4. Mm -hmm. So they can call the extension office mm -hmm. um, or they can contact me mm -hmm. at 716-3481 okay. and to tell me whether or not they want plants, whether or not they want to sell coffee to us. Mm -hmm. So all of that is possible. Okay. For that matter, we also want to do a rehabilitation program right. because a lot of yes. persons have abandoned their co True. coffee trees. And, and, you know, and you shouldn't know why. Yes. Because they cannot sell they it. They cannot <laughs> sell it. So therefore, a lot of them are very tall. Mm -hmm. um, so, but what we have noticed is that since we started harvesting, the um, harvest period has extended because you know if you're harvesting mm -hmm. it will continue flowering mm -hmm. but if you have the drying up on the tree. Mm -hmm. Another agro processing plant will be commissioned in Angers on Sunday and this is the NTN Nightly coming up the latest happenings in youth and sports with Ryan O'Brien. The world's climate is changing and that affects all of us. Storms are becoming increasingly intense. Periods of intense drought and heavy rain stress farm animals and destroy our crops. Higher average ocean temperatures kill our coral reefs and change the migratory patterns of fish. St. Lucia contributes only 0.0015% of global greenhouse gas emissions, but is doing its part, along with countries around the world, to reduce the emissions that are warming our world and changing our climate. These efforts are called mitigation. But decades of emissions have already changed the climate and the greenhouse gases in the atmosphere today will increase average global temperatures even more. We need to adapt, that is, do everything we can to prepare for and respond to the actual and expected negative effects of climate change and everyone has a role to play. We need to protect our crops, build homes that withstand storms and keep our drains and waterways free of garbage to help us recover or bounce back from climatic events. Learn more about the Government of St. Lucia's National Adaptation Plan and the steps you can take to protect yourself and your fellow St. Lucians. Welcome back. We join Ryan O'Brien for the latest happenings in youth development and sports. Welcome once again to our update from the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports. I'm Ryan O'Brien. With the first engagement of young sports leaders, just a matter of days away, Program Development Officer of the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports, Nairon Taliam, has stated that the training in this program gives the youth of St. Lucia a greater sense of the worth of volunteerism. What it does is that it creates that pool of young persons that we could call on at any time to assist us when we have different events and even organizations actually calling us to, to um, um, send those young persons to, to actually assist because they have seen the, the kind of skills that we have actually impacted upon those young persons and they, they see it as, as good skills that they could use those young persons to help them volunteer. Mr. Taliam also noted that the training of these young leaders presents an opportunity for them to gain employment. A lot of young persons are unemployed and when they go in and look for jobs, they always ask them about um, their, their um, background or what they have done. You know, and then this actually volunteerism aspect assists them in actually um, as a platform, as experience for them when they're looking for jobs. The upcoming training session for young sports leaders runs from February 25th to the 28th at the VG Multipurpose Sports Complex. Three more matches were completed as the 2019 Mass United Insurance 50 Overs Under-19 Schools Cricket Tournament continued on Tuesday, February 19th at the Balata Plain Field. 
Sir Arthur Lewis Community College defeated Babino Secondary by 80 runs. Sir Arthur Lewis, batting first in a game reduced to 30 overs aside due to rain, made 160 all out in 27.3 overs, with Kyle Adonis 30, Tyrell Chico 20, Simeon Gerson 19, Kervel Prosper 17, Chal Sipal 13, and Matteo Boloin 12 being the leading scorers. Bowling for Babino Secondary, Jaden Flora had 2 for 5. Caleb Thomas 2 for 19, Tariq Edward 2 for 31, and Shaquem Breen 2 for 35. In reply, Babino Secondary was dismissed for 80 and 23 overs, with Bolton Sears making 37. Bowling for Sir Arthur Lewis Community College, Simeon Gerson bagged 4 wickets for 4 runs, and Sheldon Busby 3 for 19. At the Grosley Playing Fields in Mary's College, led by a Senji from West Indies under 15 player Akim Ogis, easily defeated Cicero Secondary by 164 runs. The Mary's College, batting first in a game reduced to 35 overs a side, made an impressive 243 for 3 in their allotted overs. Aki Mogis, batting with utmost ease, hit the first century of this year's tournament. The elegant left handed batsman made 104 not out with 12 holes and 3 sixes. Other valuable contributions came from Zida Nathaway, 41, Jehan Buda, 33, and Jovel Dupre, 26. Bowling for Cicero Secondary, Eddie Sidney picked up 2 for 39. In reply, Cicero Secondary was dismissed for 79 in 22.2 overs, with Ismail Clement and Rashad Eugene making 11 each and Eddie Sidney 10. The wicket takers for St. Mary's College were Amari Vena with 4 for 17, Sherquan Prudent 2 for 6. At the PI playing field, Sufre Comprehensive Secondary completed a comfortable 8 wicket victory over Viewford Comprehensive. Fieldford Comprehensive taking first knock, dismissed for 96 in 22 overs, with Crystal Fannis making 16 and Shervan Bertil 12. The leading wicket takers for Sufre Comprehensive were Richie William with 3 for 12 and Nick Jabatis 3 for 20. Chasing 97 for victory, Sufre Comprehensive, led by Anil Fauche 41 and Akin Ogi 17, easily got to the target, finishing on 97 for 2 in 15.2 overs. Minister responsible for Youth Development and Sports, the Honorable Edmund Estefan, has reiterated government's intention to empower the youth of the nation through sports. The minister made a disclosure while delivering his address at the National Sports Awards Saturday night. As we celebrate our 40 years of political independence, I give you the assurance that we are progressing positively with sports development. This government is making massive investment in sports development for the further improvement of our youth of this country. Before we go, the Ministry of Youth Development and Sports is assisting with the coordination of a school's pole vault clinic number one to be held at the George Odlam Stadium on Thursday, February 21st. The clinic starts at 9.30 a.m. and runs until 2.45 p.m. Participants from Corinth, Bocage, Babuno, St. Mary's College, St. Joseph's Convent, Vidbutai, Cicero, and Anchipo are asked to be at the Derek Walcott Square for their transportation, which leaves at 8.15 a.m. And at that same time, transportation for students from Chozelle, Beanfield, and V4 Comprehensive, they are asked to know that departure is from the Sufre Square. That's all from Youth and Sports this week. I'm Ryan O'Brien. Happy Independence and see you next week. Thanks, Ryan. St. Lucia is one of the countries that share diplomatic relations with the Holy See and His Excellency the Most Reverend Fortunatus Apostolic Nuncia of the Holy See to St. Lucia presented letters of credentials to the Governor General of St. Lucia, His Excellency Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack on Wednesday. The Most Reverend emphasized the intention of the Vatican. Pope Francis, has been persistent in his call to reach out to the more vulnerable members of our society and our world. He has also insistently invited all to do more to protect our world from avoidable disasters, especially those disasters caused by human beings with consequences that translate into interpersonal and international conflicts. 
wars, migration flows, and climatic changes. His Excellency Sir Emmanuel Neville Snack shared St. Lucia's decision to become a parliamentary democracy, ensuring everyone was endowed with free will and the right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. We'll be celebrating in true glory its 40th anniversary of independence. As a nation, equal in status with every other nation, great or small. I therefore consider your presence here at this time to be not fortuitous, but divine. It is no wonder then that the people of this land of light proclaimed and affirmed in its 1979 constitution their faith in the supremacy of the Almighty God. The self-subsisting creator of heaven and earth and everything in between. The Holy See established diplomatic relations with St. Lucia on the 1st of September, 1984. And stay with the NTN Nightly. Up next, Primus Hutchinson is here with the NTN Wampon Aquayon. What's in the food you're eating? Do you really even know? All the chemicals and hormones used to accelerate their growth. All the artificial flavoring, sweeteners and colors too. We consume and we don't spare a thought for the damage that they'll do. The that no, they do. think about the children. Think about the children. How will we save them? Chemicals and GMOs are not the solution. Use organic and join. Excessive agrochemical use, additives, and genetically modified foods are harmful to health and the environment. Join the good food revolution. Grow, buy, and consume organic. A message from Rise St. Lucia and the Ministry of Sustainable Development with funding from the GEF Small Grants Program, UNDP. The good food revolution. Welcome back. And time now for the NTN's Wapon Aquayol with Primus Hutchinson. Monsieur, Madame, département qui nous responsabilité pour information, un gouvernement cette fois-ci, ça c'est GIS, à ce moment-là, télévision nationale paye à NTN, capote au nouvel acquéol, présente au Primus Hutchinson. Premier ministre honorable Alan Chasney, tu parlais dans une cérémonie pour établir un système qui a fait, qui a fait en sorte à d'avance si pire situation des as tsunami a parmi les autres. Si le premier ministre Chasney Bi woki responsable pour service projet sala en Nations Unies te entre en bout yon program des assessment concerné changement climat et plusieurs sujets te trouvé discuté particulièrement sa ki pou ni pou ni pou fè et puis go lam lan mer premier ministre Chasney déclaré ki si yon lam lan mer levé en hauteur de 3 pieds et ka affecter la vie sérieusement et la wat castri il dit aussi place kon kol de sac ka pouvé et puis de l'eau et aussi toutes ces valeurs qui ont payé. C'est pour ça que le gouvernement ni pour dépasser un pile pour réclamer la plage, la vigie, et pour garder la meilleure manière pour protéger l'aéroport George Charles. Selon le Premier ministre, il est nécessaire pour dredge le cul-de-sac pour former un dôme de l'eau qui a une habilité pour amasser tout l'eau qui a entré et pour une cause de l'eau à trouver chemin pour courir. Quand dans le John Compton. Pour ce ça, le Premier ministre a dit que gouvernement a pour garder à quelle façon, pour décider la direction qui est plus meilleure pour le pays. Le Premier ministre Chasney a vu que ces décisions ne peuvent pas porter bénéfice économique, mais il fait assurer que le peuple pays et l'établissement trouvent une bonne protection. Le Premier ministre Chasney a déclaré qu'il est nécessaire pour commencer à catiler pour tirer les résidents côté yoyé qu'habité pour les présents parce qu'il a écouté trop moins parce que si on se paye les situations viennent plus sérieuses il veut dire que 
problème concernant mi et l'autre menace de la mer pas obligé fait des mains mais qu'il fait quand même même si en 10 ans pour venir alors il est nécessaire pour mettre tout mon œuvre en place à présent Deux ministères gouvernement, éducation et construction et bien bâtiment, infrastructure, comme nous avons dit en anglais, j'ai pris une initiative là pour encourager et aujourd'hui bon camarade à les étudiants à dire ces problèmes qui existent côté à ce qui est plus fort qu'après l'avantage à ce qui est plus faible qui est. C'est pour ça que là, y a un écrivain, c'est le ça c'est Lovely Sheridan. J'ai pris des marches là. Pour faire les étudiants pays à comprendre de manière la situation ça là, qui a affecté ma maille ou la terre, et juste une cause ma maille pour prendre la vie. Mademoiselle Chavadan a introduit ça il a body bench pour faire les enfants plus sensibles contre violence à ce ça qui est plus faible. Principal pour l'école Carmen Reddy, Madame Siana Nolly George, féliciter l'initiative ça là, Mademoiselle Sheridan, parce que ça a encouragé les étudiants pour traiter les collègues qui ont fait et qui ont fait. Il déclare que le projet de ça a aussi aidé pour réduire la surveillance de la jeunesse, comme si l'attitude de ça très voir à parmi la jeunesse à présent. La principale école de Kamen Renéa, qui a fait le projet Body Bunch, a protégé une meilleure occasion pour la jeunesse préparée pour embrasser la situation de la société et pour entretenir yon mer l'environnement à l'école à cette ici généralement. Officier de l'éducation pour deuxième commune PIA, Martha Foster aussi applaudit pour le body bench là. Foster dit qu'il a ni toutes sortes de qualités de façon côté maman et l'école qui a pris l'avantage à ce qui est plus faible pour les autres là. Il n'y a pas espoir qui, pour comme ça là, c'est yon qui a porté à ses assistance pour détruire nettement via la petite salle à parmi les étudiants. Mamzel Sheridan expliqué le programme Body Bench là, qu'on y a un côté qui a encouragé les étudiants qui a resté plus par quoi parce qu'il y a pas des gens et que monde pour parler mais pour jouer puis yo, qui a présent trouvé l'occasion pour participer dans le programme ça là. Ça veut dire là où Kassati a comme si dit personne pas voulu à toucher ou y a qui place au à sous y a bas côté y a étudiant qui a pas chaud et que moi donc est-ce ok est-ce que vous avez parlé puis y a un jeune ben jouer qui en a l'autre le programme ça là, c'est principalement pour les enfants en l'âge 4 ans pour 10 ans et qui ont commencé à l'école Carmen Rennie le passé. Le représentatif du ministère de l'Éducation et puis l'organisation pour ce type de pays là, et puis mettre et maîtresse l'école primaire avec les enfants en cette ici pour introduire un système d'assessement pour performance en grade de haut. Le programme ça là, qui est pour grade 4 et pour grade 6, car il y a diverses façons qui critiquent pour ces enfants là en système d'éducation. Il y a un officier qui est ça pour sciences sociales. C'est le mobile expliqué que c'est le concept d'examination qui est développé pour comme ça là. Pour faire assurer que l'assessement qui a concerné ces enfants là en ces grade ça là, qui est égal en tous ces pays qui là. Il y a un qui avant les instituteurs qui a expérimenté ces problèmes pour ça directement côté pour entrer dans le financement de l'OCG. Alors, le programme ça là, qui est placé dans une position pour ça, les étudiants sortis dans leur guide qui ont déjà accompli. Mais c'est dit aussi, il faut encourager les instituteurs et les parents pour faire ces étudiants savent ça, ils si possible faire. Alors, les étudiants qui ont les instituteurs dans l'école, qui sont au courant et puis le programme d'éducation dans n'importe l'école parce qu'ils sont tous qui ont suivi le même programme là. Je dis à l'adresse du adresse Premier ministre là pour la nation pour 2019, il était examiné l'hôtel Imo Bato Touriste qui a visité cette ici pour les officiers faire assurer que plus de touristes débattent et acheter des produits pays. Selon le Premier ministre Chasné, il n'y a pour faire assurer que plus de 600 000 touristes qui ont en train de payer tous les années trouver un encouragement pour descendre ces bateaux là et qui ont trouvé dans ces boutiques qui ont vendu des produits naturels pour les acheter. Le Premier ministre a déclaré que le travail pour agrandir près de ses affaires, j'ai éprouvé et grossé à ce que les bateaux touristes sont plus gros et plus neufs à ces bateaux qui ont porté plus de 600 000 passagers qui ont entré à la route de cette ici. Alors, c'est faux, nous parlons pour bien vous suivre. Selon M. Chasné, 
c'est qualité vision ça là qui administration you don't repeat ni en temps passé qui ne cause bâtissement facilité pour ça faire en ces années 1981 mais présentement facilité ça là trop petit et que j'ai venir nécessaire pour gouvernement vu et dépassé pour agrandir et aussi improuver à ce degré pour produits et services et d'autres activités à grand la place Castri. À parler de ça, le Premier ministre Chastney parlait de gouvernement nouveau, un eh développement nouveau en façade nord. L'hôtel Rex saint a déjà commencé la construction et le gouvernement est d'accord pour continuer à louer les propriétaires en condition que ce groupe hôtel Sala qui est bâti en plus haut degré hôtel international et aussi pour l'hôtel là implémenté un programme pour embrasser le pays européen. Le Premier ministre Chastney a annoncé aussi l'hôtel Sandals en choc. J'ai commencé à mettre cette place à neuf et ajouter plus de chambres. Le Premier ministre l'a dit aussi, il n'y a pas que situation qui devant, car il y a pour les présents qui a affecté le bâtissement. Et aussi, ensuite, des 350 chambres qui a coûté 600 millions de dollars, qui ont trouvé résolu plus vite que possible. À ce moment programme, monsieur, madame, nous avons eu plus à progrès qui a fait l'industrie hôtel à pays. C'est comme ça nous avons trouvé une nouvelle nous. Je vous remercie au temps pour garder et vous avoir une invitation pour que je ne puisse encore l'aider à vous présenter l'autre nouvelle à Créole. Merci en pile, Primus. Et here's a look at what's happening to us weather-wise. Moderate to brisk easterly winds and above normal seas will continue around the eastern Caribbean over the next few days. Patches of low-level clouds drifting with the wind flow will produce some scattered showers over the region during the next 24 hours. Small craft operators and sea bathers are advised to exercise caution due to brisk winds and above normal seas. Tides for Castries Harbour, high at 4.30 p.m., low at 10.42 p.m. Tides for VA4 Bay, high at 5.37 p.m., low at 12.09 a.m. Seas moderate to locally rough with waves and swells 5 to 7 feet or 1.5 to 2.1 meters. Sun will rise Thursday at 6.24 a.m. And that brings us to the end of the NTN Nightly. Join us next time at 7 p.m. with a repeat at 7 a.m. You can also catch up with us anytime on the St. Lucia Government Facebook page or YouTube channel. I'm Nisha Charles.